Doctor, talk about uh, vitamin D's relationship with multiple sclerosis. You had that in the book, and there's been a lot of information, I think, in the last few years out on that disease. Can you talk about vitamin D's relationship there? Yeah, uh, vitamin D and multiple sclerosis. So the, the relationship um, uh, was, we believed there was a relationship because of several facts. One, um, uh, 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 Dr. Kurtzke actually was with the uh, VA of all places to study uh, multiple sclerosis, which is much more common in women than men. Um, but the beauty of the VA is he has access to a lots of data that other people don't mm -hmm. be because of the Veterans Administration, which is almost like a socialized medicine within our system. Um, <clears throat> and what he found was that um, uh, risk for uh, multiple sclerosis seemed to correlate with latitude. Um, uh, and that the further away from the equator you were born and raised, the higher your risk for developing mm. uh, multiple sclerosis, with some very few exceptions, some islands in the north or south, uh, North Atlantic, South Pacific, where lifestyles were very different, um, uh, and they may have been also isolated from some certain infectious diseases because they weren't part of some mainland uh, thing. But so there's this latitudinal association away from the sun, more risk towards the sun at the equator, less risk. He also found that um, uh, your risk seemed to be established before the age of 15. And uh, so something was happening related to this la latitude before your 15th birthday that set your risk in stone. Mm. Uh, and then your risk was the same. So if you were born in North Dakota, um, you have one of the highest risks in the continental United States for the rest of your life, if you, even if you move at 16 years of age to Naples, Florida, okay? Conversely, if you were born in Naples, Florida, and at 15 years of age move to North Dakota, you're, you will always have one of the lowest risks for uh, multiple sclerosis um, uh, in the continental United States. So these were interesting facts that, that, that allude to maybe what the cause of the disease is. Then um, we have other studies uh, looking at um, global incidents um, uh, um, uh, from the World Health Organization, and they matched up with the, the VA data that we were seeing. So it wasn't just our data, it was data at different places all around the globe that, that correlated this. There's been several studies done over the last several decades. Um, uh, the most recent ones um, in the last decade, one was the Nurses Health Study, another was a military uh, study out of Harvard. Uh, and they both showed a relationship between vitamin D intake and risk for developing multiple sclerosis. Um, uh, and so the higher your D intake, the lower your risk of developing uh, multiple mm -hmm. sclerosis. And the effect of that seemed to be greater the younger you were in the study population. Mm -hmm. So when they looked at the military group, the youngest recruits who were under 20 years of age their, the correlation between their D level and their risk of MS was much stronger than older military mm -hmm. personnel um, and, and, their, uh, and their risk for multiple sclerosis with vitamin D. Um, so again, it, it confirmed this age relationship that risk and, and the closer you get to disease onset or establishment of disease, which is in childhood somewhere, mm -hmm. um, uh, and vitamin D. So there, it, it clearly confirmed this relationship that D is probably important and that something's happening very early in life uh, to establish this risk, and D is, is relevant to that, uh, that pathophysiology. Um, uh, then there was a study done. Obviously, you take that information, you say, well, what can we do with it? So if we treat patients now, will they get better? This is the mm -hmm. obvious. Uh, um, question. So Reinhold Wieth, who's a, um, a biochemist uh, in uh, Toronto, at University of Toronto, um, who's a world expert on the safety of vitamin D. Uh, he's written no numerous papers on, on what is a safe dose and why, and, and compiled all the data. He also did a study um, looking at high-dose vitamin D replacement in MS patients uh, in Toronto. Um, uh, and that study showed that um, high-dose replacement of, of vitamin D seemed to reduce the symptoms of MS. It wasn't dramatic, but there was a difference between the, the group that got high-dose vitamin D and the, and the group that was in the control group. Um, so that tells us two things about sort of autoimmune disease in general. One, vitamin D is probably important in the cause, mm -hmm. okay? One of, one of several variables, but one important variable uh, in the cause of the disease. 
and two, may be important in the manifestations of the disease, the severity of disease once it's established, um, uh, uh, and, uh, and the prognosis. Um, so D early on may prevent disease, D later on may reduce disease symptoms and reduce disease activity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's really interesting because I, a couple of times you've mentioned how important it is to get it in those early years up to 15, 20 years old. And again, I don't think that's something that most people realize, but it's important throughout your life, but those early years are really a key, right. aren't they? It, it, you know, it's, I, I think of it almost like a hide and seek game. Um, Mother Nature is, it's like, uh, what were those uh, uh, games we used to play where you'd go treasure hunt thing mm -hmm. for a birthday party or something? And you would try and hide things in the most unlikely place so nobody would think to look mm -hmm. there, right? Okay. So if you're, um, uh, if, if you're Mother Nature and you're saying, well, I gave him this big brain, let's just play a little intellectual game with these, these humans we have here and let's just see how smart they really are <laughs> for fun. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to hide all the important <clears throat> stuff somewhere where they either don't want to look um, uh, or they would never think to look. So she hides it in pregnancy. Okay, mm -hmm. um, And you ask someone, like a pregnant woman or someone, and you say, well, do you think this is important? They'll say, oh, yeah, it's really important. Well, did your OBGYN talk to you about your diet? No. Um, uh, and did he talk to you about any key nutrients that might be important? Well, he put me on a prenatal vitamin. Do you know what's in it? No. And so there's mm -hmm. so little attention paid. And then our, our current medical system, um, that's the highest risk legally. Mm -hmm. So nobody wants to touch the pregnant lady. That's where all the money is, man. That's where everything is going on. From the moment of conception through the first two years of life is where I would say 90% of our health is, is set in motion. And then we can, we can modify it slightly after that, but there are some, some risk factors that are set in motion there that are very difficult to modify mm -hmm. uh, later on. I liken it to a, a, a cannon. And, and so my arm is the cannon, and at the base you have the, the cannonball sitting at the base. Um, uh, and your childhood, those first 20 years, is the length of that barrel. And once that cannonball leaves the barrel, you're kind of on your way. And if you say, well, I didn't want to go that way, I want to go this way. Eh, it's not going to make any difference mm -hmm. that you turn the cannon this way now that the, bar now that the, the cannonball's mm -hmm. left the barrel. So those early, that early part of life is critical um, uh, um, uh, for, for causation for a lot of diseases that occur later in life. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and we really need to pay more attention to that.